Okay, we're ready to go. Parsha Shemais. I, 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 it, I think it's a little difficult for me to believe what my eyes are, uh, what I'm seeing over here. See the chash of Dr. Rothkopf over here. Made my contact about you. I'm not sure it's you. It's a bar mitzvah parsha. He probably has to speak Shabbos. Wants to hear a good nesiva shalom to say over. So we're going to accommodate him. We're moving a little bit now from the... Basically, for a, quite a while, we were discussing the Avoys, we were discussing Avram, Yitzhak, Yaakov. Now we're going to be discussing Mitzrayim, Golos, which is something which is very pertinent even to us today. There's Golos, and there was Golos Mitzrayim, and there were four Golios, and here we are in the, in the last of the Golios. This is the last stop before Mashiach. We're almost there. There's no question about it. I'll read you a passage from this week's Parsha. The passage says, Moshe Rabbeinu is about to go on his shlichus for HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He's about to go to Klai Yisrael and tell Klai Yisrael, I was just thinking, Taka, he was thinking, everybody knows it from the song today, It's time, the time, uh, time has come for HaKadosh Baruch Hu to fulfill his promise to Avram Avinu, it's time to leave Mitzrayim. So it says, Moshe Rabbeinu saw that the thorn bush we, we call it a thorn bush, was burning fire. And uh, the thorn bush is not burning up. It was not becoming, it wasn't consumed. Let me see, I, I can't believe what I'm seeing right here. It's an unbelievable sight. Why is the thorn bush, why is the snare not burning up? He was told to take off his shoes, with the place that you're standing on was a Mokim Kaddish, and so on, the passage goes like this. So in order to understand what's going on here, we have to understand that Moshe Rabbeinu was about to go and tell Klai Yisrael the Shlichas. So it must be that if this happened right before he went to Klai Yisrael, it must be that it's connected in a way, you just you can't separate them. This must be an intricate part of what it has to happen here for Moshe Rabbeinu to go to Klai Yisrael. It was an extremely important part of his shlichas. In other words, Klai Yisrael, we, we see there's a Pesach at the end of Parsha Re'e. The Pesach says that uh, we're discussing today's your Bar Mitzvah Parsha of end of Parsha Re'e is his Bar Mitzvah Parsha. The Pesach says at the end of Parsha Re'e, Ki b'chi pozoin, in a hurry. Klai Yisrael had to leave Mitzrayim in a hurry. They went out of Mitzrayim in a hurry. So everybody asks, and we know what the answer is actually, why did Klai Yisrael have to leave in a hurry? Because Klai Yisrael had gone down into the Mem Tez Shari Tumah. They went down 49 levels of Tumah. And had they gone down one more level, there's no way they could have gotten out of Mitzrayim. So it had to be B'chi Pazoy, and Akash Baruch had to take them out right there at that second. So the Siva Shalom asks a beautiful question. We know HaKadosh Baruch Hu promised Avram Avinu that he's going to take Klai Yisrael out of Mitzrayim. So, okay, why wait until until they're in the Memtes? Take them out after 46. Why does it have to be in such a rush? We have to make such a matzah, a scene, after 49 with the matzahs and the this. We don't have time to bake. We don't have time to walk. We don't have time for anything. Uh, when they're, uh, you know, let's play it safe over here because you didn't know, you know, you're at the edge of a cliff. What if there's a banana peel, right? What if something happens? After 46, let's uh, we'll play it safe. No, that didn't happen. What's the reason? Why did Kaddish Baruch wait until the Yidden was so low, until they were down into the Memtes Shari Tuma? So we're going to go back and we're going to discuss for a minute the Yisoy that the Nesiva Shalom says all the time. And it's a beautiful, beautiful idea for people to know about growth in general, about how a person could grow. The Nesiva Shalom discusses many times, and we mentioned it here in the Shir sometimes, the Kuska de Chiyusa, the last, last life that's left in a seed. You know, when somebody plants a seed in the ground, we've, we've mentioned a few times, what happens to the seed? The seed you put it in the ground, and it rots, and it continues to rot, and it rots more, and it rots more, just about right before that seed. And this is where Kodesh Baruch Hu set up the world. Right before that seed dies, it sprouts out and grows, can grow something tremendous, grow something unbelievable. And this is the way Kodesh Baruch Hu set up the world, that the strongest and best growth comes when, and then these are 21st century words also, when you hit rock bottom. Sometimes you hit rock bottom, you hit the bottom, you, you, and, and you feel that you're not accomplishing, you feel low, you feel like you're disappointing everybody, you feel that everything is down low, just at that point you have the capability to turn it around and to grow up more. 
So that's what happened at the time, and it knows that the time of growth, it's teetering between becoming totally obscure and, 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 and uh, your mom is about to, about to go, it's about to disappear. And that is why, and that, that was the, the matzav of the Yidin and Mitzrayim. That's what happened to the Yidin and Mitzrayim right there. HaKadosh Baruch Hu had to take them out in a hurry. He had to take them out because he didn't want to take them out before. Because had he taken them out before, they wouldn't have grown as much. They wouldn't have done as much. And he couldn't wait another minute because had HaKadosh Baruch Hu waited another minute, the, the Klai Shol Chas Rishon would have fallen to the 50th Shara Toma and they would have never gone out. And that was the perfect time for them to go out. So now when Moshe Rabbeinu, let's go back to what we were seeing here in the parsha. Moshe Rabbeinu saw the snare. And, 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 and HaKadosh Baruch Hu said, Moshe Rabbeinu, this is very, very important for you to see. Moshe Rabbeinu, you might think that the Koiches of Toma, that, that, that the Yidin were in Mitzrayim for so long, you might think that it had consumed them already. So I'm going to show you something, Moshe Rabbeinu. Uh, uh, I'm going to show you something. Look, it's burning. It's burning. But there still must be something there that's preventing it from becoming totally consumed. Inside the Yidin, inside somewhere, there's something that's, that's preventing it. And that's what Moshe Rabbeinu wanted to know. How is it possible that there's so much Tumah, they did so many things in the trying to cause that they went down to Menta Shari Tumah. How is it possible that it's not? And that was the Kusta de Chiyusa. That was the last bit of life. And we know it's brought down, many before should bring down what this Kusta de Chiyusa was. We, and uh, the Gemara says, and we know because one thing the Yidin never lost is they never lost the Emunah. And that Kusta de Chiyusa, that small thing that was left, that seed that was planted in Klai Yishol, they could grow. That was their emuna. No, Zeyna Khanami, they had gone down into 49, but they still had the emuna. So what did Moshe Rabbeinu ask? If you look a little bit further in the parsha, Moshe Rabbeinu said, Behem loy ya'aminu. Behem loy ya'aminu li. They're not going to believe. I can't believe that after all of that and all the things that they've done wrong and all the gullus and all the mitzrayim and everything, I can't believe that they still have this emuna. I can't believe that it's possible. So Hashem answered us something very important, which every yid has to remember at all times. HaKadosh Baruch Hu told him an unbelievable answer that Siva Shalom says. HaKadosh Baruch Hu told him, HaMokoyim Asher Ato made the place where you are standing, Admas Kodesh. The place where you're standing is an Admas Kodesh. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is telling Moshe Rabbeinu, do you know where you're standing? Do you know who you're talking about? You're not talking about any nation. You're not talking about Stam, a person in the world. You're talking about Admas Kodesh. You're talking about Kalal Yisrael. We're talking about Kalal Yisrael. Kalal Yisrael lives by, by, Klai Yisrael is by a totally different set of rules. In other words, watch, watch what you say about Klai Yisrael. This is my Klai Yisrael. This is my children. These are children of Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov. The, what you're treading on, Admas Kodeshu, they defy normal laws. Klai Yisrael doesn't, you think that automatically when you get to 49, you have to get to 50. No, 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 no. Klai Yisrael has a special, they have a Muna. They have other things. They have a, a strong belief in a Kaddish Baruch Hu. They have things that they never give up. And then, and the, the, uh, why? Because they're ma'aminim b'nei ma'aminim. And the same thing applies to us. You take a look, even when we don't realize that it's there. And today, we've been in Gullahs, it's almost 2,000 years that we're in this Gullahs. But every, I mean, we should say it every day. We definitely sing it every once in a while. That we believe. Ani ma'amin b'muna shalema b'viyas ha-mashiach. We believe, and when a Yid says it, and that's what they said, unfortunately, in, in, in World War II, when, 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 they, when they were being led to their deaths, that's what a Yid believes. A Yid believes till the last second, and it has nothing to do with life or death as we understand it. It has to do with the Kim of Klai Yisrael. And look what it was, an Imam of Emunah Shalema, Klai Yisrael resurrected itself. Klai Yisrael was, was, was nothing left after, after the war. But today, Klai Yisrael picked themselves up, and that's a lesson for every year. That's a lesson for something, for every person to understand. That sometimes you feel like that everything you do is so disappointing. You feel like some, that everything you do, you feel very low. You feel like, what am I contributing to Klai Yisrael? Mashiach's not here. Uh, you know, maybe, you know, it's, it's very hard. Sinas Chinam is a hard thing. Lashon Hara, it's a tough thing. The Gemara says, why we're in Golis? Because of things. It's very tough. I've been, I haven't been good. I haven't been... Uh, so nice to my friends, I haven't been that nice to my neighbors, I haven't been, you know, th these are very tough things. But there's, there's one thing a person has to know, that you always have that little bit inside where you turn it, where you can turn it around. It's never too late, and if you turn it around, and if you turn it around, you should know that if you turn it around, even when you're almost at the end, even if you turn around then, and, and, and that's what they keep saying, that we hear in Golas, this is, this is, this is the end, we're at the end of Golas. And it could be, I was thinking, when we look around, we say the matzah is so bad, Maybe this is a chesed of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's a chesed because when it comes back, when Mashiach does come, and it should be uh, mamish tomorrow, right? Like, to come for Shabbos also. Shabbos, I don't know about. 
But when, when, it, when, when the Mashiach does come, it's going to be that much better, and we're going to grow that much more. And that's the lesson we learn from the Sneh. And that's the lesson that Kosh Baruch was telling Moshe Rabbeinu. You're treading on, on holy ground over here. You're talking about Klai Yisrael. Klai Yisrael always has the capability to come back, and that's something we always have to keep in mind. Uh, like the eagle. Like the eagle.